Somebody praise the Lord there. Tonight, the Lord is bringing his word to everyone. And that word will transform your life. Understand, the word of the Lord represents him and stands for him. And the Lord in his, is in his word. You believe the word, you believe him. There's no way to believe God except you believe his word. And as you believe his word tonight, the Lord is ready and he'll pour the blessings upon your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're going to talk about three things in one. Number one is personal readiness. The Lord is ready all the time. His grace is available all the time. The power is there all the time. Number one, personal readiness. Number two, the promised restoration. You see, we're looking at Daniel, the book of Daniel, for a purpose. The Lord had promised that at the appointed time that he will restore the children of Israel, get them out of Babylon and get them back to the land of Judah. The promised restoration. And then number three is the perpetual realization that you come. You see the word, you believe the word, you accept the word, and you have a realization of that word today, tomorrow, perpetually, for the rest of your life. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. Thank you for what you've done, what we're still doing. And I'm asking, Lord, that tonight you get every one of us ready so that we can have the promised restoration and we can have everything realized perpetually in every life in jesus name bless your people tonight turn every life around for the better and we ask good oh lord that your glorious power will be manifested in every life tonight in jesus name confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. We're coming to Daniel chapter 9. And we're looking at verses 3 and 4. Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication or fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Look at that. I search my face. I search my mind. I search my heart. I am going to seek the Lord. That's what makes us ready. Personal. That I came here not to be a spectator. I came here so that I search my face, I search my mind, I search my focus on the Lord. Look at verse 4 there, in verse 4, and I prayed. He set his face on the Lord, and he prayed, and I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and the dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. To them that love him. If I'm going to receive something from somebody, I cannot turn my back on him. And he's at the back there and I said, okay, what do you have for me? Give it to me. No, I face him. I look at him. I show a smile. I show an agreement and I stretch out my hand so that I can receive the people that love him. They don't turn their backs on God. Okay, God, you are the back there. They say you can heal. Can I have the healing there? You turn your face unto the Lord and you show your affection, 
you show your consecration and your concentration on the Lord he said to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments look at chapter 10 chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 12 it says in chapter 10 verse 12 then said he unto me fear not Daniel when you set your face before the Lord and you are asking for the performance of the promise of God for the realization of the promise of God and the Lord knows your heart you love him and you're faithful to him and you make yourself ready that you're going to have the blessing of the Lord the Lord sent a messenger from heaven and angel fear not Daniel for from the first day that thou did search thine heart to understand from the first day that I saw that you didn't just come as a spectator you came and you set your heart you set your mind and you set your focus on me to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God thy words were heard when you set your face you set your mind and you say i want the blessing of the lord and you're not looking here and there you're not saying will it will it not will god do it will god not do it when you set your heart your face your mind on god and then he says even before thy god thy words were heard and i am calm for thy words as you pray tonight as you set your mind and you set your face and you are asking the lord lord here am i do this for me the lord will come to you there power will come to you there deliverance will come to you there and the blessings of god will come to you there in jesus name a look at chapter uh, chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 32 chapter 11 reading from verse 32 it says and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries it's talking about the people that they don't have their mind on God, they don't have their focus on God, and they do wickedly, and they keep on doing wickedly. They come to retreat, they keep on doing wickedly, they come to crusade, and after the crusade, they do go on doing wickedly, and they come to conference, and they come in the presence of God, and they hear the word of God. There's no repentance, and without repentance, they are as they ever were. And it says they keep on doing wickedly, they be corrupted by the flat trees of the antichrist but the flat trees of the of the evil world but then it says in the final part latter part of that verse 32 but the people that do know their god the people that do know their god shall be strong i will be strong and do exploits you will do exploits in jesus name the people that do know their god as the creator and they know that nothing on earth nothing anywhere is created by any other one but by the almighty god the people that do know their god the people that do know their god as the god the father of our lord jesus christ and they know that god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son Son, that whosoever whosoever here whosoever there whosoever there on the radio whosoever there over the television whosoever online that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life the people that do know their God the people that do know their God as the holy God holy 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 the angel sang and the people that do know their God that God desires Desires that those who come to him will live righteously and godly and holily in this present world they know their God that God will not uh, brush over gloss over and excuse the evil or sin in any way they know that he's a mighty God a holy God and whether in the private or in the public they do not go into any unrighteousness the people that do know their God God, that God loves righteousness and God loves holiness and they are not saying oh God heal me I want to serve the devil more but I do, I'm not too strong I don't I can't run I can't walk heal 
save me so I can run faster in the service of the devil. Those people don't know God. God will not give you his healing, his gift to go and serve the devil. God will not give you prosperity to go and use the money to serve the devil. Those people don't go, know God. Oh God, heal me, heal me. Uh, you know, I've not had strength now to go and do my normal I wear robbery. I'm so weak and this pain is troubling me. Heal me now so that I can get up again and go in the night and do my usual thing. God does not give us his goodness. God does not give us his healing. He doesn't give us the strength so we can serve the devil. Those people don't know God, but the people that do know their God, that God was and God is and God will ever be, that God is unchanging, is mighty and powerful, that God is holy and righteous, and to this will he look. The people that tremble at his word, those are the people that know God, they will be strong. Tonight, you'll be strong. When you turn your face, your might on God, and you know God, the God of the Bible, the God of holiness, and the God of righteousness, and the God of all power, the people that do know the God of heaven, they are the people that will be strong, and they will do exploits. Tonight, exploits power manifestation demonstration of his power for the people that know god in jesus name pastor what if i don't know god and i want to know him that's exactly why we're here that we turn your mind on the lord jesus christ you turn your heart to heaven you say i want to know god and i want god to know me it's one thing to know god it's the other side for you for god to know you and say now you love him now you obey him not temporarily for a night but perpetually in your life you will your life if everything you have, you will that unto God. You know him, he knows you tonight. There will be exploit in your life. Power manifestation in your life. Amen. Three things we're looking at tonight. I'm looking at number one, the confident expectation of seekers of assured salvation. Assured regeneration, assured restoration, assured redemption, expectation, and the confident expectation for the seekers of the salvation, the restoration, the redemption that is already assured. We'll find that in chapter 9, in chapter 10, in the confirmed experience. The confirmed experience of sanctifying strength by the authoritative scripture. Authoritative scripture. The scripture of truth. The truth of scripture that comes into our lives and makes us to have the strength. And it makes us strong. And it takes all weakness away. It's the sanctifying truth and the total truth that we have as we experience the performance and the realization of the scripture the confirmed experience of sanctifying strength by the authoritative scripture number three the continual exploits that exploit will start tonight in your life and then continually day after day and week after week as you keep on knowing the Lord and you know him more and more and more and you go further in the knowledge of the Lord and you are steadfast in that knowledge of the Lord the continual exploits of saints despite the antichrist self will we're coming to number one number one we're looking at the confident expectation of seekers 
of assured salvation. We're coming to Daniel chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, and the which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Then in verse 2, verse 2 says, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books understood by the books what made Daniel the man he was he read the books of the Bible available to him and as he read the books of the Bible available to him like Isaiah like Jeremiah he understood the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the in the desolations of Jerusalem you see if we're going to pray and if we're going to seek the Lord and if the Lord is going to answer we'll see what he has written in the book what has he written in the book look at Jeremiah chapter 29 and I'm reading from verse 10 it says for thus says the Lord thus says the Lord we cannot pray contrary to what the Lord had said thus says the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon after, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place you see we cannot close our eyes and close and block our ears and then say we're praying and praying and praying somebody goes to the mountain and is fasting and praying he doesn't understand the bible somebody goes in the valley somebody goes to the riverside and somebody goes to you know to israel and he goes to you know nearby river john and praying praying and praying and he does not know know the word of God. It's the word that leads us to what God had promised that he will do. He said after 70 years I will visit you. I will perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Look at verse 11 there. In verse 11 for I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end expected and our expectation must be based on the promise of God on the word of God our expectation must be based on what has he said what has he promised what does he require of me what does he want me to do how does he want me to set my mind my heart my love on him so that the blessing of God will be upon me I will give you the expected end look at verse 12 in verse 12 and they shall ye call upon me. Daniel knew that although the promise had been given, it is not automatic. If I, you know, just stand there, God will be marking time, and he will see that now we have kept 70 years, and so we don't need to pray. Whatever will happen, will happen. No. Daniel said, I'm going to do it according to the word of the Lord, because God had said, after the 70 years, then shall ye call upon me and he shall go and pray unto me it, it, the Lord well, he was going to make sure that 70 years in Babylon had not changed the people that they are now praying to the God of Babylon when you are in Babylon do as the Babylonians do when you are in Rome do as the Romans do and they were like chameleons here and that no God said at the end of the 70 years here is what you will do you will pray unto me and then I will hearken unto you then in verse 13 it says and ye shall seek me the seekers those who are seeking the restoration and they're seeking the salvation and they're seeking the healing and they're seeking the deliverance it said ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me 
with all your heart when you search for me and you seek me you're not playing games you are not gambling with God you're not trying to cajole God you're not trying to uh, you know cover the face of God from his word and you're not playing tricks you're saying that Lord here is your word here is what you promised you said we'll se spend 70 years there and then we'll seek you with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind and then you said we'll find you when we search for you with all our hearts then in verse 14 in verse 14 it says and I will be found of you says the Lord and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you says the Lord and I will bring you again unto this into this place where I cause you to be carried away captive that's what Daniel read that's why he made up his mind look at what the Lord had said he didn't say I oh, don't have anything to do I don't have any price to pay God will do whatever he will do everything has been settled God has said it and because God has said it everything it's all right we don't have to repent we don't have to turn to the Lord we don't have to pray we don't have to seek the face of the Lord everything is no God said 70 years but that's 70 years is if you make up your mind and you set your face and you set your heart and you set your love to seek me and you seek me with all your heart then I will answer I'll take you out of the captivity now Daniel how did he do it in seeking the Lord Daniel chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 5 in Daniel chapter 9 looking at verse 5 we have sinned and committed iniquity you see that there's confession there's the conviction God hates evil God hates sin what landed Judah and the people of Judah in the land of Babylon is their sin what landed us in our in the evil in the terrible things we're going through now is our sin all have sinned and come short of the glory of God he confessed we have sinned and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments look at there at verse 8 in verse 8 he tells us oh lord to us belongeth confusion of faith we're ashamed we have done evil he was confessing with a broken heart he said and to our king and to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee as you come to the Lord and you say Lord you promised me this you promised me that don't just stand still there and say well there's nothing I will do there's no price to pay and there is uh, no consecration to make there's no confession to make God has said he will do it you have to confess your sin you have to turn away from your sin and you have to seek the face of the Lord in God's appointed way look at verse 11 there in verse 11 ye all Israel have transgressed thy law look at Daniel that's the right way to pray we're not saying well God has done what he wants to do what can I do they have said what they want to say what can we do it's our fault it's because of our sin and it says all Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice therefore the curse is poured upon us and then it says and the oath that is written in the law of Moses the servant of God because we have sinned 
against him. Now it's very clear. If we're going to have salvation, there's something to do. You confess and you forsake your sin. If we're going to have restoration, the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, the backslider there, if we're going to have the uh, restoration of the peace of God and of the goodness of God and of salvation, if our names are going to get back into the book of life, you see how Daniel did it? That's how everybody ought to do it and understand. We cannot uh, play ignorant before God. We knew that was wrong. That wasn't the right way. And we did that. Then we confess. And then we forsake. And the Lord will have mercy. Somebody there he said, and the Lord will have mercy. What does he say? Second Chronicles chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. Turn. There's no other way of salvation. There's no way you can say, okay, I don't accept that. I'm going another direction, another road. I'll have salvation. No way. The narrow way that leads to life eternal is that you recognize you are a sinner. Is that to recognize all the good works you try to do and to cover up? All that will not grant you salvation, restoration, regeneration. All that will not grant you conversion. But what the Lord has said, the Lord said, This is how I give forgiveness. That's the only way I give it. This is the way I make a child of the devil to be converted and become my child. There's no other way. He said, this, this is the way that I'll forgive you and set you free, whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, you're a man, you're a woman, if my people, churchgoers, if my people, religious people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. If they humble themselves, if they turn, if they confess and forsake, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Forgiveness will come to you. Healing will come to you by turning away from sin that what you were before what you used to do where you used to go and the drinking and the adultery and the fornication and the gambling and the evil thing you were doing you turn away from them and you turn to the Lord and say Lord I'm repenting Lord I'm convicted of my sin Lord I will not go that way again I, and I come salvation will come Redemption will come and healing will come. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 28, Proverbs chapter 28, reading from verse 9 He that turneth away is here, is here from hearing the law. Mm, I don't want to hear that repentance, <laughs> that's not my stuff. And uh, confessing your sin, I don't want to hear that. I came for healing, I came for deliverance, I came for blessing, and I know that you know everything is available God is mighty and God is great and God does not discriminate anyone hearing the word of God to repent uh -uh, I don't want to hear that he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be abomination and then he tells us in verse 13 in verse 13 he that covereth his sins shall not prosper he that covers the sin with hypocrisy and with pretense. And we're shouting, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. And they talk faster and faster. And he even pretend to be speaking in tongues. Confess your sin. Turn away from your sin. Repent. You cannot commit adultery, fornication in the afternoon. You cannot tell lies in the afternoon. You cannot blaspheme the name of God in the afternoon. And then come in the evening and you cover that up. And then God, I'm here. 
No, you are not there. It's when you come with your heart, with your mind, with your concentration, and you confess that sin, and you forsake that sin. He that confesseth and forsaken them shall have mercy. Mercy will come. I said mercy will come. We're coming back to Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 24 now. Daniel had set his face before the Lord. He had confessed the sin of the nation. He had confessed the sins before the Lord. He was expecting confidently that the blessing of God will come upon him and upon the nation there will be restoration from captivity and they'll get to the land look at what happened now and the angel now came and revealed to him 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish transgression when your prayer is answered to finish transgression when the lord has responded to the prayer of confession and forsaking sin and seeking the face of the Lord one thing that he does he finishes the transgression remember Jesus said it is finished when you confess when you forsake then all the perdition all the punishment all the pollution of the sin it says it is finished then number two is to make an end of sin to make an end of sinning when God answers a prayer it is the Christ then the Messiah he makes an end of sin that what you didn't have power to do before now you have the grace of God he has answered your prayer he has forgiven you and there's an end of sinning and then to make reconciliation for iniquity he reconciles you now with God if you pray the right way if you confess and forsake your sin if you seek the face of the Lord like God had ordained in the world, he makes reconciliation. And then it says, look at that number four, to bring in everlasting righteousness. That now you pray, you confess, you forsake, you seek the face of the Lord. It's not just, you know, I'm still here, a church goer, I'm still here, a religious fellow. No, he brings it to your life righteousness everlasting righteousness then it says to seal the vision and the prophecy that the prophecy of the lord will be sealed in your life and fulfilled in your life and to appoint and anoint the most holy it then gets you into the path of righteousness and holiness and he makes your life to be holy committed and consecrated appointed for the most holy look at matthew chapter 1 verse 21 matthew chapter 1 verse 21 he tells us here and she shall bring forth his son here is the fulfillment the messiah that uh, daniel spoke about the mediator that daniel spoke about here is the fulfillment now as we seek the lord and she shall bring forth his son and i shall call his name tell me the name Tell me, tell me, shout it aloud, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's what he came to do. He didn't come to just, you know, gloss over our sin, cover up our sin, give us license that go on sinning. His coming will not be fulfilled. The purpose of his coming, the reason for his coming. Daniel already tells us in Daniel chapter 9 verse 24, when he comes, he'll make an end of sin. When he comes, he'll put all that unrighteousness, put that away from my life. Now he has come and you see why he came is that he shall save his people from their sins. Romans chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and make Jesus the Lord of your life it says and that I shall believe in thine heart that 
God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. In verse 10, in verse 10, it says, For what the heart man believeth unto righteousness. We don't believe into more sinfulness. We don't believe into more corruption. Before you said you were saved, you were into sin, iniquity, transgression, corruption. Now you believe, and then there's still that iniquity and sin and transgression and corruption. No, not at all. It tells us here. It says, for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and for the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They come setting their heart on God, setting their mind on God. They come confessing their sin, forsaking their sin, and because of that they rely now on the promise of God and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved salvation for you tonight I said salvation for you tonight you must not live here without confessing forsaking and making up your mind the Lord Jesus Christ died for me so that all my sins can be washed away and then with that you become ready for the salvation of the Lord I'm looking at number two here number two gives us now chapter 10 of uh, Daniel look at this the confirmed experience of sanctifying strength by the authoritative scripture. Look at chapter 10 of Daniel verse 7 and I Daniel alone saw the vision. Don't wait for other people. Don't say did you get the point? Why are you asking him? You get the point. Are you going to submit to the Lord? Why are you asking her? You submit to the Lord. Are you going to have the salvation, regeneration, the strength of the Lord? Why are you asking them? Make up your mind. If you were the only person in the whole world, Christ will still have died for you. And because of that, you pin your faith on the Lord by yourself. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision for the men that were with me, saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Look at verse 11 there. In verse 11, and he said unto me, it's personal is personal personal readiness that the Lord brings the revelation and the Lord brings the promise and the Lord brings the condition of the blessing of the Lord and you hold on to that personally by yourself and you said unto me O Daniel a man greatly beloved when you set your mind on God your heart on God your love on God and when you say I don't want to know any other thing all I know is God my creator my redeemer I don't want to be submissive to any other thing to society or to sin or to Satan all the authority I know is only the authority of God God will look because you exalt him and because you elevate him and because you say he is the only one I know I don't want to know any sacrifice I don't want to know any so-called friend I don't want to know any doubter all I know is the God of heaven who has given me this word and I'm going to be obedient to his word you become greatly beloved in the sight of the Lord understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright you're going to receive from the Lord stand upright for unto thee am I now said and when he had spoken the word this word unto me I stood trembling and then he tells us in verse 12 in verse 12 then said he unto me fear not Daniel when you have repented fear not when you believe on the Lord fear not when you are praying to the Lord with great expectation fear not when you heart your mind every 
everything is focused on God. Fear not, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou did set thine heart, search thine heart to understand and to chase in thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Tonight, as you stand up and you look up to heaven and you are praying to the God of heaven, the God of holiness and the God of righteousness, the God of faithfulness that fulfills his words from the time you stand up or raise up your hand, heaven will look at you. Heaven will respond to you. And he said, thy words were heard and I am calm for thy words. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, it says, then there came again and touched me. They came again and touched me. When you stay there and you pray to the Lord and you have confident faith in God and you have this expectation of the Lord and you want to experience His strength in your life, it says, He came and touched me and he said and he strengthened me sanctifying strength he strengthened me look at verse 19 in verse 19 and said oh man greatly beloved fear not peace be unto thee and the lord is saying to you tonight peace be unto thee when you stop fighting then peace will come. The people who are fighting against God, fighting against the word of God, fighting against their own salvation, fighting against the Christ who has come to deliver us, they don't have peace. There is no peace, says the Lord, to the wicked. But because but the people who turn, the people who repent, and the people who accept the word of the Lord, I say once again, my brother, my sister, there, peace be unto thee. You forsake all the action of strife, of fighting against the Lord, peace be unto you. You submit, surrender unto the Lord, and you say, The Lord, I will serve, I will worship with all my heart, with all my soul, peace be unto you. Be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, I was strengthened, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. That's where we're going. I will show you that which is noted in the scripture of truth. How does the blessing of God come? Through the word of truth, the scripture of truth, the authoritative scripture. Are we going to have salvation by the scripture? Are we going to have sanctification by the scripture? Are we going to have healing by the word, by the scripture? Are we going to have deliverance by the scripture? All the blessings of God is when the spirit of God comes and he applies that word in our heart. Look at James chapter 1 verse 18. James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. The angel said to Daniel, he said, I will make you to understand. I will show you the scripture of truth, the truth of scripture. Here is it, begotten, born again, turn around, converted by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. How about healing? How does healing come? Matthew chapter 8, we're reading from verse 16. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. Salvation comes through the scripture of truth.
Healing comes through the scripture of truth. And then it says, and he healed all that were sick. And then we come to John chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Salvation by the scripture of truth. Healing by the scripture of truth. Sanctification by the scripture of truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It says the truth comes to us and we receive that truth and we pray on the basis of that truth and we're committed to the Lord, consecrated to the Lord on the basis of that truth. Salvation comes. Healing comes, sanctification also comes. Look at Acts chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. How do we grow? How do we develop? How do we become steadfast? Saved, healed, sanctified, and was saturated with scripture that makes us steadfast. It says, The word which is able to build you up. And when the arrows come, when the devil comes, how do we overcome? By the scripture of true Revelation chapter 12. I'm reading there from verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony you take that word you believe that word you accept that word and you speak out that word and you know as the Lord has said in his word so it will be unto me that's how victory comes that's how you conquer you will conquer in Jesus name we're looking at Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 I beseech you therefore by the mercies by the brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As you present yourself, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your body, everything, all your faculties, you present unto the Lord as the watch as required and requested that you do that's how you will know the will of god and stand in the will of god and your life will be straightened out in jesus name amen and amen and then in verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us and be not conformed to this world the world does not have the word the world does not believe the word and the world does not submit totally completely unto the word they may go to church they may be religious they may observe christmas they may observe easter they may do festival they may do anything but Watch of the world and the word of God is not the strength of their lives but you've come to the crusade you're offering your life to the Lord and you don't want to be conformed to this world anymore be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God and then the word will work mightily in your life I want a better amen. amen. Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel, the good news. What the gospel? Repent and believe. That's the gospel. Turn away from sin and turn to the Savior. That's the gospel. What's the gospel? Turn away from Satan and turn and be reconciled unto the Almighty God. That's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that everyone that believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting like look at the gospel right there g of the gospel that's god 
so loved the world that he gave his only, that's the all there, gospel God gave his only begotten son, that the S there, that has to believe in him, you'll not perish, that the P there, but have everlasting, that the E there, life, that the L there. The gospel is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever the west or east or north or south whosoever in black africa in white america that whosoever anywhere anytime in any generation that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life you will not perish I will not perish. The Savior has come. And God has demanded that you turn away from your sin. And you turn to the Lord in real faith in the Lord. And it's the people that are obedient to the word. And they turn away from sin. And they turn to the Lord to save them. Those are the people that will not perish. I pray you will not perish and then it says in verse 16 it says he that believeth not he that believed in the past but has gone back to idol worship now it's no more believing no not he that believed in the past is gone to the far country of carelessness of frivolity of evil of idolatry of fornication of Adultery, not he that believed in the past, but he's living his sinful life now. He that believeth continuously, he believes in the Lord, he carries that believing from the crusade ground, and he goes from believing and believing, and he says, I am a perpetual believer in the Lord. He that believeth and is baptized in water shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and then verse 17 in verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe i am a believer i am a believer and the signs will follow all the believers in Jesus' name. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18, it says, They shall take off serpents, throw them away. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tonight, you will recover. I said tonight you will recover. I remember over in Uganda because I've been going from South Africa to Zambia to Malawi before we got to Uganda and the conditions of things uh, you know for my voice was not the very best I could barely whisper while I was preaching I'll be saying if you believe in the Lord today you will be saved and I was forcing myself to do that my voice had gone and um, a pastor in Calabar now I was in Uganda at that time. I remember the wife also remember there was a mother there, and this mother had a child, a girl, and this girl did not have the proper opening in her private part, which means that you know, even for urine and everything to come out, and the proper opening was not there. And then when Uganda and that night, I remember I was there, I was saying, if you believe in the Lord, the Lord will answer your prayer tonight. And you know, I have to squeeze my face because to bring those words out, they were very difficult. And then I said, The Lord is here to heal anyone and everyone. With that kind of voice, I said, You are there. Whatever your challenge, your problem is, raise up your hand now. And he did, and with my voice that was almost gone were prayed and then they went back home and when they woke up the following morning God had performed the operation 
that the opening that was not there, everything now came clear and everything was all right tonight. The power is here. Creating miracle in your life in Jesus' name. You might have heard me say before in Namibia. In Namibia, there was this mother, a mother again, and brought the child. The problem of the child was, uh, you know, after some months the child had been born, uh, the tongue was sticking out. And anywhere the child was, all the flies were so coming there, they driving the flies away. And they tried to do operation. And they, they were to take the child to South Africa. And the government of Namibia, they were willing to pay the cost for the operation. They got to South Africa, and the doctors examined the child, the tongue out that she could not bring the tongue in and the doctors in south africa said there's nothing we can do to this we cannot cut the tongue she'll bleed to death and so they came back to uh, to namibia and as they were there they saw our overseer there in namibia and they were saying that please uh, this is a difficult problem you know us uh, stories in the newspaper everywhere we want a miracle for this child and so and they were pleading with the overseer that the overseer will bring them to me and then I will pray. And the overseer said, just stay in the congregation and uh, the power of the Lord will walk in your life. I come to tell you tonight, the power of the Lord will walk in your life. And that night I said, the miracle is coming your way now. Lay your hand where you have the problem. Raise up the other hand. We closed our eyes. We said in Jesus' name, every miracle, every healing, every deliverance that you know, your people need, give to them now. Lo and behold, when we said the final amen, help me shout final amen. amen. Say that again. Amen. Heaven heard. As we open our eyes like this, the tongue had become normal. The tongue had come in. And everything was now all right. And he brought, the mother brought the child out and said, I wanted to see the pastor. But before I had a chance to see the pastor, I saw the hand of God. You will see the hand of God. Because it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tonight, you will recover. Yeah. How? Understand. By the word we're saved. By the word we're healed. By the word we're sanctified. By the word we're made steadfast. By the word we overcame. By the word we have the hand of heaven touching our lives. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word. It's the word. It's the word. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word. And every word of promise you hear, the Lord will confirm. As you believe the word, accept the word, stand on the word, the Lord will confirm the word in your life in Jesus. In confirming the word were signs following amen we're coming now to daniel chapter 11 i'm looking at point number three continual exploits of saints despite the antichrist self-will now in this chapter the lord reveals when the Antichrist comes, he'll be a man, notorious man of self-will. Look at this, Daniel chapter 11 verse 3. And a mighty king shall stand up, that's the Antichrist, that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will, self-will. And anybody that has that kind of will today, that no matter what we preach, no matter what we read in the Bible, no matter how others are repenting, he has his mindset. It's not going to do the will of God. He will do according to his own will. Is the spirit of the Antichrist. Look at verse 16 there. In verse 16, but he that cometh against him shall do 
according to his own will self-will and is the spirit of the antichrist and none shall stand before him and he shall stand in the glorious land which by his hand shall be consumed look at verse 36 in verse 36 and the king shall do according to his own will according to his own will but then despite that will of the antichrist that he comes and he does evil and he speaks blasphemy yet we will do exploits you will have exploits look at verse 32 in verse 32 and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries if you like like flattery you're going to fall into the hands of the antichrist that's how he tips people that's how he jewels people that's how he can jewels people by flattery and flattery and flattery and he brings you up so that he can set you down that's what the devil does like ahab search neighbors on that horse and show the whole city this is a great man is flattery and jezebel and ahab wanted to destroy that neighbor for by the flattery and that's what the antichrist will do that's how religious uh, hypocrites will do and flatter you but the people that don't know their God shall be strong. The people that know their God as the healer, they know their God as the savior, they know their God as the deliverer, they know their God as the redeemer, they know their God as the all in all, the creator of the whole universe, they know their God as the one that said, I am God, I change not. The people that do know their God, they'll be strong you'll be strong that's what makes us strong strong in faith strong in expectation and strong in receiving from the lord and strong in receiving the miracles of the lord because we know our god and we know that he cannot fail he will not fail the people that do know their god even at the time of the reign of the antichrist the people that do know their god shall be strong and do exploits you will do exploits it will start from tonight in your life where are you there praise the lord is confirmed in your life in jesus name. look at first john first john chapter four i'm reading from verse three in first john chapter four verse three and every spirit that confesses not that jesus has come in the flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of antichrist whereof ye have heard that it shall come and even now already is it in the world World, that spirit of the antichrist opposing righteousness opposing the way of the lord even now that spirit of antichrist is still in the world but understand understand that even though all those people are corrupted by the fact flatteries of the antichrist the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do explain look at the next verse here this is verse four year of god little children and i've overcome them we overcome I said we overcome we overcome Satan we overcome evil spirits we overcome sin and we overcome sickness because it says ye are of God little children and I've overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the greater one lives in us the greater one abides in you and you'll be an overcomer tonight an overcomer today an overcomer continually for the rest of your life an overcomer in jesus name look at chapter 3 there and in verse 22 first john chapter 3 verse 22 and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight whatsoever we we ask tonight we we'll receive of him 
that's exploit that any miracle you want tonight available any healing you want tonight available any deliverance you want tonight available whatsoever we ask we we'll receive of him look at chapter 5 reading from verse 14 in chapter 5 verse 14 and this is the confidence that we have in him the people you know they are God and they go know that God will never fail this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and then in verse 15 it says and we know that he hear us if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him tonight you have that petition I said you have that petition look at John chapter 14 and I'm reading from verse 12 John 14 verse 12 verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me tonight that's all you have to do you believe in the Lord tonight he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also you missed an amen there and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father he's with the father now and he said on the right hand of majesty and whatever we pray goes to his hand and then Jesus presents that to the father and he says I promised him that whatsoever I will ask and he'll pass through my name I'll give it to him and the father will give it to you tonight in Acts chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 6, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. If you are there tonight, you have been impotent in your feet and you didn't have any strength at all. Tonight, I challenge you. When you hear that final amen, rise up and walk, that miracle will be there. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength in verse 8 it says in verse 8 and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God tonight it will happen Look at verse, uh, verse 16, in verse 16, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. You have faith in the God, in the God that can never fail, in the God of yesterday and today and forever. It is that faith in the name of the Lord that makes this man stronger whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In the presence of everyone tonight, the mighty power of the Lord will be demonstrated in your life. Look at Acts chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 5, Acts chapter 8. I was looking at verse 5 and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, Christ the healer. Christ the Savior, Christ the Sanctifier, Christ the, back, uh, the Baptizer, Christ the Performer of signs and wonders. He preached Christ unto them. And then in verse 6, we're told, and the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And then in verse 7, it says, For unclean spirits crying and with loud voice came out 
of many. All those some clean spirits will come out today in Jesus' name. That will possess with them. And many, many, many taking will possess and that will lame were healed. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. Great joy in the Alpha location here. Great joy in all the cities and the congregations where we are gathered. Great joy everywhere tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 14 verse 7. And there he preached the gospel. And there he preached the gospel. That's the word. It's the word of God. And there he preached the gospel. It's the gospel of the open door. That now the door of faith is opened unto you. And the door of miracle is opened unto you. It's the gospel of God. The good news from God. It's the gospel of the glad tidings of open door. It's the, it's the God. It's the gospel of the supernatural. What we talk of the gospel it comes with the supernatural the gospel on the glad news of the supernatural is the gospel of power it the gospel comes with power he enters into the heart of the sinner and the power to save comes there he enters into the body of the sick and the power to heal the sick comes there is the gospel of Emmanuel God with all that God in his power coming from heaven and he lands on you there and Emmanuel becomes a reality it's the gospel of emancipation that delivers you and sets you free from every yoke and every chain in your life it's the gospel of hell there it's the gospel of love and the gospel of liberation and the gospel that knows no limit that when that gospel comes to you it leads you up it affects your heart your life your soul your body and the supernatural will take place in your life in jesus name and the alpha location said amen look at verse h in verse h there and there sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb i would never add one and then in verse 9 verse 9 the same heard paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed verse 10 says it says he said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Didn't even go to touch her, but touch him. He leaped and walked. He leaped and walked. Power is coming your way. The power to save, the power to forgive, and the power to set free. Tonight is your night of salvation, the night of your freedom, the night of your redemption is coming now. Are you ready? I said it's coming now. Are you ready? It's about and eyes closed. You are telling the Lord tonight, Oh Lord, I'm here. I've heard the gospel, the gospel of God, the gospel of the open door, open door to salvation. It's the gospel of salvation. It's the gospel of uh, the power of God that gives you pardon and peace in your heart. It's the gospel of emancipation. It's the gospel of Emmanuel. It's the gospel of the life of Christ in you. And now if you want the emancipation of the Lord, you want the salvation of the Lord, wherever you are you raise up your hand, you say I've heard the word and now I seek my heart and I want to seek the Lord, I want to forsake my sin and I want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior, where are you wherever you are, don't waste time raise up your hand there and say I want the salvation remember, you will confess your sin and forsake your sin and as you confess your sin and forsake your sin and you believe in the Lord then the salvation will come the redemption will come 
unto you. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper, but he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have the mercy of the Lord. Where are you? Rest of that hand. You want forgiveness, you want salvation, you want the peace of God in your heart. Rest up uh, that hand. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up and say, I'm here, I'm here. I want the salvation of the Lord. I want the forgiveness of the Lord. Stand up wherever you are. God bless you there. God bless you there. As you are standing up in your mind, in your heart, confess and forsake and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I have sin. I will not continue in that path anymore. I forsake my sin and I come to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Raise up that hand and stand up and pray with you now, but make sure you confess your sin you forsake your sin and you say i'm going to follow the lord until the rest of my life for the rest of my life raise up your hand and stand up if you're sitting down but you know you don't have this salvation you don't have that this victory over sin you'll be doing yourself a world of good to stand up and get this salvation from the lord because he that believeth not shall be done but he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved where are you now keep that hand up as you are standing up anywhere here at the alpha location and uh, anywhere in the world you are connected with us now we're praying together father in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord because you have called everyone you've come to call us unto repentance and then to faith in christ and i pray for everyone now standing up and they're forsaking their sin in their heart and they are linking up reconciling with God through the Lord Jesus Christ I pray forgive them and save them in Jesus name I pray that sin will not be their ruin iniquity will not be their ruin and I pray that transgression will not be their destruction in Jesus name I pray Lord the faith to leave all those works of darkness and to leave all those paths of sinfulness and then to come to the Lord in real dynamic saving faith in the Lord grant to everyone in Jesus name confirm the forgiveness and confirm the reconciliation for uh, confirm the salvation in their hearts right now give them the power to go and sin no more thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray amen god bless you keep on standing there our counselors are there they'll attend to you our moderating overseer will come and lead us in this time and then after i'll come back and pray for those who need miracles signs and wonders and healing keep on standing this is a great day for you a glorious day a day you will never forget. A day that you are born again. A day that you become a child of God. Your history has changed already. Keep on standing, our counselor, please. Let's spread all over the congregation and attend to those who are standing up Collect their details, write clearly, legibly, boldly, capital letter. Don't sit down until you are attended to. Angels are rejoicing in heaven because of you. It's a great experience, a glorious experience. To be saved, become a child of God. 
make sure you give the correct information. The correct phone number. Counselor cross check, make sure the information are correct. Let's move around quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't pass by anyone. Let some go to the back, far back, across the road. Make sure you attend to everybody. Remain standing until somebody has attended to you. Those online, you have given your life to Christ. Take note of the link that is being streamed on your system now. You can click it, fill the information requested, and submit. Cancel us, please. Let's go run. Let's go run. Everybody. If nobody is coming to your side, you can raise up your hand, wave it so that the counselor will see you. This is a very important aspect. They must take down your information so that for the help coming from the convener can reach you. You'll be missing greatly if you don't allow your name to be written down and your information to be submitted to the counselor. Therefore, remain standing and make sure you are attended to before you sit down. All who are standing up, you should remember tomorrow, 2.30, there will be lunch hour with Jesus, in the campus hall, just at the right hand side from the puppy here on at the back. And it will be on your own left side as you are sitting. 230 be there. And all other people have given their life to cry since Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And those who are giving their life to Christ right now. We we'll join them. It's going to be great tomorrow. You must not miss it. Cancel us, please. Have we finished? Because I see some people returning. Supervisors, can you wave to us? And let us know 
on the left hand side any supervisor there that can wave to show us you are finished on my right hand side anyone if you are finished wave to us so we can see at the back Attention, please. There is a correction. The time for the launch hour with Jesus for all convert tomorrow is 1 p.m., not 2.30 again. Immediately after the impact, the Impact Academy for Youth, which is coming up here tomorrow morning, immediately after it finished, by one o'clock, the lunch hour with Jesus we hold in the campus hall behind us here. So please, let's take note of the correction. It is no longer 2.30. The lunch hour with Jesus for all converts is now 1 p.m. in the campus hall just behind you. Counselors, are we true? Please let's wave to all so that we'll know if you are true. Because I can see people on my right hand, they are coming back. But I'm not seeing the same movement from the back and the middle and my left. Cancel off at the back. Have you finished? Let's hurry up, please. Okay, thank you. From the center at the back, any supervisor to wave to us so we know whether you are finished. Make sure you submit all the forms, fill, counselor, to the appropriate quarter, to your supervisor. Don't put them in your Bible. Don't take them home. If they have not attended to you, please wave so that the counselors who are returning will see you. Get ready. The time of your miracle is at hand. We can rise up now as we get ready for our Father in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody I said, Praise the Lord. Paul the Apostle said to that man, Stand 
upright on thy feet. And immediately he lived and he walked. Your own time has now come. Don't wait for wait for any other person after the final amen. That miracle would have been deposited in your life right there. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Let your mind, your heart, your faith, your confidence, your trust be right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, mighty God, great God, loving God, and the God that can never fail, we come before we come before you on behalf of everyone, every man, every woman, every brother, every sister here at the Alpha location and everywhere. Lord, touch everyone now in Jesus' name. Touch their blind eyes. Blind eyes, I command you, begin to see very well in Jesus' name. Their ears, their tongue, touch them, heal them now in Jesus' name. Any swelling there, wherever the swelling may be, I pray the Lord will touch you with His power. Swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Breathing problem, be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that any internal problem, cancer or ulcer or whatever, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Be healed. Be healed. Every demonic problem there, I command that demon, that evil spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, on everyone, to my right, to my left, at the center, everyone now here, and those who are listening over the radio, over the television, any congregation online, anywhere, send forth your power upon everyone heal everyone deliver everyone search every captive free you sent your word and you heal them the word has come to your people and you are healed in Jesus name thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we pray it is done I said it is done. I said it is done. The miracle is right there. Check up yourself, discover, and come out to give your testimony.